Dr. Ruth Hussey, OBE, is Regional Director of Public Health and Senior Medical Director for the National Health Service Northwest in England. Her job responsibilities include health improvement and health inequalities, clinical leadership, health protection, and the development of social care in the region. Nationally, she links with the UK Home Office and the Ministry of Justice. She's a visiting professor at the University of Liverpool and honorary fellow at Liverpool John Moores University. I caught up with her in London. I graduated in medicine in uh, 1979 and um, at that time uh, pursued a career in general practice. Um, that was very enjoyable, loved seeing different types of family practice in affluent disadvantaged areas. Um, but in those days in, in the UK, it was very much a, um, a buying in for life into a, a general practice setting. And in my late 20s, I um, wanted to explore new avenues, new ideas. I wasn't ready for that sort of commitment. And so I came across public health and I always felt I wanted to achieve something, but I didn't quite know what it was. And um, so I, I did the master's in public health and basically said to myself, you know, it'll be good all round development, but if it doesn't work out, not sure exactly if it's for me, I, I will be a GP. That was my, um, my, my career destination. And I have to say, um, within uh, six months of getting into the training, I never looked back. Well, the first one was switching from clinical practice into public health and not having a, a queue of patients waiting to see me every day. And that was quite a transition. Um, having got into public health leadership roles, I think it was trying to understand where power lay. It was never quite as straightforward. Um, it wasn't as structured, maybe, as, as you find in clinical practice. Um, the other thing I found was that decision making was much more complex. You know, in clinical practice, you're taught to see a patient, confront the issue, deal with the issues as presented, uh, follow through and get, and get the results and move on to the next stage. In leadership roles, I had to really sort of think around issues, work out um, where people's uh, ideas were coming from and really use different methods of engagement. And to some extent, clinical training helps you to do some of that, but it it plays out, in, I suppose, in a much more complex uh, way and in different ways in different organisations that I've been involved in. First of all, uh, public health doctors sometimes, you know, introduces the drains doctors, you know, people who've got a, um, a history in, in, in traditional public health. So really getting over that uh, sense of almost being pigeonholed in a certain way was quite a key issue early on. Um, also, people interpret your comments in the role that you're in. Um, and there were times when I took on an acting chief exec role where people's approach was very different. The messages I was giving were seen as coming from a managerial colleague, not from a public health physician. So really just who you are um, influences how people interpret what you're saying, what you're trying to do. Um, so there's lots of different ways in which I think being a physician in, in leadership roles in, interacts with um, people's perceptions of you. It's absolutely crucial. I think most of the role is about building relationships. You know, to be a leader, you need followers. And to uh, establish that level of support for your ideas or your, your desire to create change, you have to build relationships, both in terms of political influence to uh, support changes you might be proposing, but also to engage the people who you want to change to come with you on that, on that process. So uh, it, it's crucial in so many different ways. And uh, um, I think nobody perhaps has a blueprint on how you do it because some of it is about you and your own intrinsic style of working with others. Um, but I've always tried to adopt um, a sort of framework of how I engage with partners um, in, in any change process. Um, very much trying to build trust and I do that based on honest relationships, um, being straightforward about things um, and dealing with problems. Um, you know, I always say to colleagues who I work with, you know, if I don't know about something, I can't help you. Um, so let's put it out on the table and, and, and work our way through it. And, and that's the style I've brought to it.
completely resonates with my experience. In fact, my very first interview 20 years ago for a director level post, um, one of the questions I was asked was, um, it's lonely at the top, can you handle it? And uh, I was quite young and quite surprised by that question, but over the last 20 years, I've certainly um, seen that play out. Um, you know, there are times when you really can't share things with people, you have to find a way through it. And uh, um, building a network of people who you can trust to um, support you through some difficult issues sometimes is really important. It's one of those conundrums, isn't it, that, that um, you know, small projects come and go and we don't know about them and um, I've often come across situations where people, because they haven't invented it, they won't adopt it for themselves. And um, I think over the years we've tried lots of different methods um, and some of them have been more successful than others. Uh, role modelling, putting a bit of challenge, competition into that. There's lots of different ways. More recently, um, a number of my colleagues in, in the organisation I'm in went on a, a large-scale change programme Program. And that really helped to give us some different tools and techniques and a different way of thinking about spreading impact. And, um, and we picked um, hospital activity due to alcohol as the example we worked on. And it's been absolutely fascinating and incredible how we've, we've just used a different way of, of approaching it, involving different people to the extent that those people don't really know that they've been part of a large-scale change programme. They've just picked up the ideas and run with it for themselves. So it's a different way of trying to get buy-in. Um, the big message for me is, you know, you need the hearts and mind, you need the story, you need to play to people, you know, what's in it for me? Why should I want to engage with this? But you also need the, the crunchy numbers, the clear measurable goals and the methods and techniques behind it. And if you bring those two things together, it's almost unstoppable. It is a conundrum where some of the public services are more market driven in style and yet you know that you need to collaborate on some services that, that uh, might be vulnerable if they're not working across a bigger geographical footprint and so on. Um, one of the programmes that uh, I didn't lead but uh, was in, in the organisation that, that I'm in was around improving quality called Advancing Quality and what they did was to bring an American model of data benchmarking uh, on quality um, at the clinical activity level um, brought that across into the, the region that I work in and engaged clinicians in uh, working together to introduce the system and by doing that um, they've created a community of clinicians across a, lots of hospitals who are collecting the same data. So in one sense they've collaborated to produce a system. What it generates though is competitive advantage because some hospitals are doing better than others on, on the results of those quality measures. And so that in itself has created a, a healthy drive to improve. Uh, so I think you can build competition and, and collaboration together, um, but it needs careful thinking through. And um, you know, like everything, just one method doesn't give you the benefits that you need across um, uh, complex issues like quality. Oh gosh, um, there's many things that haven't worked out in the way that uh, I would have wanted them to. Um, so. Uh, I suppose just picking a current example, um, we set out to create a, a new separate organisation to drive health improvement. Um, but over the last six months, the, the economic climate and various factors have changed to the extent that a couple of weeks ago we decided not to progress with this project. And um, what it's taught me is, I suppose, how you deal with the disappointment of people around you who came along with you and wanted to see it happen and all you know how, how you keep their enthusiasm up when they, they put their eggs in your basket and you've suddenly said no we're not going to do that anymore and it's a brave thing to do to change direction um, so how you handle that and how you actually 
um, deal with the disappointments of your own disappointments and others, I think is is um, key in any um, project that that, that um, doesn't succeed in the way that you'd hoped. Um, but lots of other lessons as well about timing, about the context. You know, thinking through um, how you're flexible in how you try and deliver change, given some of the challenges that we've got ahead of us at the moment. I mentioned that you know, I try to have people around me who I can uh, talk things through with and I've often found at key points in, in my working life that having a coach has helped me, uh, particularly in a time of transition from one job to another or when there's a tricky issue that really needs talking through in, in a safe environment. So I, I do use those sort of um, support mechanisms. Um, I also think this, the hackneyed thing about work-life balance is really important. Um, I don't get it right most of the time. Um, but, uh, you know, again, when the children were little, it was a great leveller to go home and cook dinner and um, just switch off. So those, the social support side of um, outside of work is really important and, and make space for it always. Um, and then having some interest that is completely different. And in my case, I have an allotment, so I grow fruit and vegetables. One of the things that really got me into public health and, and, and the whole and leadership in public health was change and um, you know wanting to do things that makes it be builds on whatever we've got and makes it better all the time and so the, the opportunities now are both quite um, challenging uh, the economics are very difficult um, but I have been around the system enough now to know that actually we, I've been through some of those processes before you know I, I have had to close institutions before um, I don't know how this economic climate will play out but out of all of this there will be uh, there will be a new set of opportunities and uh, the big mission is to leave the place in, in a better way than, than where we are now. So um, I think it's a constant refreshing of, of opportunities that, 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 that keeps it fresh, I think, for me.